And in the recordings we're going to play for you, we can hear Marianne Trump Barry and Mary Trump discuss Ivanka Trump during the period that the Trump administration initiated their child separation policy. And then that, that when, when that damn Ivanka puts this picture of yeah. the Madonna and child on Instagram, when we the big news of the day was how Children, kids are ripped being from ripped their families. from their families. <laughs> I yeah. couldn't blame. I never heard of Samantha B before. I couldn't blame Never. what she said. So in that recording, Marianne Trump Barry was referring to Samantha B, the comedian, who had slammed Ivanka, calling her oblivious, among other things, after she posted this image of herself and her child at the same time that the country was learning that the Trump administration was separating migrant children from their families. Now, the next clip that you're about to hear, Mary Trump and her aunt talk about Eric and Ivanka's ambitions. And meanwhile, Eric's become the moron publicly. Um, Ivanka gives a sh She's all about her. Yeah, she's a mini Donald. She's a mini Donald, and, but yet he's besotted with her. He always has been. She's always been his favorite. Now we also hear what Marianne thinks about her brother Donald. And then you get Donald, who, who won't do anything for anybody unless it's going to in order to his well I, he, I mean he won't do anything publicly I mean if you anything he did he, he says look what I've done oh and I wonderful and, it's, it ends and, up being he, nothing. and he's as tight as a duck's ass right. just like dad was really but now, we've reached out to Marianne Trump Barry for comment, but have not heard back. I'm now joined by Mary Trump, Donald Trump's niece and author of Too Much and Never Enough, the best selling book on that has sold millions and millions of copies. Mary Trump, it's good to talk to you again. And also, thank you for being on with us uh, to sort of unpack the convention. It was something else, uh, the convention, I should say. Uh, let, let's get indeed. in. <laughs> well, I think a lot of people want to know what uh, tight as a duck's. Uh, posterior what does that mean exactly <laughs> it just means really cheap oh. i kind of guessed that it meant cheap but okay thank you for clearing yeah. that up yeah so a little more colorful <laughs> so so donald trump you know really put on a show um of his family really pushed the adult children forward even tiffany uh pushed them all out forward what do you think the purpose of doing that was this week i think it was twofold um, you know, it was uh, on the one hand to burnish his bona fides as a great family man. Um, and on the other hand, it was a not so subtle faint towards uh, monarchical succession, which is a little terrifying, because, as you mentioned, he co-opted the People's House uh, for his own political ends with the considerable help of his party. And so... Right. Because there were two parts of it. Like part of me thought that he saw Joe Biden being lauded by friends and his family and how much love there was in the Biden family and also Kamala Harris having her sister and her niece send her up and that maybe he got jealous and that maybe he decided to do it and that maybe the, the kids sort of got in on it on trying to sort of paint him as being similar. And, and I asked that because there was a part in the presentation when Ivanka Trump talks about her son building a replica of the White House. Um, and that it being displayed by granddad in the Oval Office, which isn't like a Donald Trump sounding thing that he might do. And then a lot of folks have pointed out, including some Republican uh, friends, have said, wait a minute, didn't she tell that exact same story about herself saying that when she was 13, she made a replica of Trump Tower and Trump put it in his office? Do you do you suspect that maybe that story was a recycle? What do you make of that? Well, first of all, from what I understand, uh, not only was that story Ivanka told debunked, she admitted that it wasn't true. Um, and it was also lifted from a story told in The Art of the Deal about when Donald allegedly stole Robert's blocks and glued them together, which, from what I understand, is also probably not true. So um, I guess gluing children's building blocks together is a uh, genetic. I don't know, but it's <laughs> re remarkable how so similar the stories are. 
It is. Uh, let me play another uh, bite of, of the, and thank you for providing us with this audio. Here is the conversation that you had with your aunt um, about the dreamers. Take a listen. Well, what ha- what he did with the dreamers? I oh, mean, God. I'm so and much in support. Blood. No, he changed his. I know, and, and but he denies it. I mean, he he would deny he changed his mind. Of course, he he's would. all over the line. Well, just like with the with the, the 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 kids who are now in de facto concentration camps down in Texas, he's blaming the Democrats for it. It's the Democrats' horrible policy, so which suggests that he thinks it's a bad thing, and yet. He's allowing it to, it's just like, it's it's mind-boggling, mind-boggling. I mean, the the, the de facto concentration camp stands out to me as a way to describe this. Um, Your aunt was a judge. Was this, was this recording made while she was still a judge? Yes, but she's been inactive for a while. Um, I don't believe at the time she was uh, on the bench. And and so did did she ever if she's calling them concentration camps, that sounds like a pretty severe thing. Are you surprised that she didn't go public, given the fact that she's got a judicial background? You know, her comments could have been really powerful at that time. Does it surprise you that she didn't say anything publicly, just only saying it to you? Unfortunately, no, it doesn't surprise me. Um, She subscribes to the same notion of uh, family loyalty that her siblings do. (laughs) Let's uh, play another piece. And this is and this one, I think, is significant because we do have, you know, aside from the controversy with Jerry Falwell Jr., et cetera, Donald Trump's biggest base is white Christians. That is his white evangelical Christians are really his base. And here is a conversation um, with yourself and your aunt about Trump and God. They, the only they time Donald went to church that I know, him, you know at least you know, when dad wasn't bringing us every reason. Um, was when he when got married. Yes, and and um, over the last several years, uh, when the cameras were at the exactly. church. So, to your knowledge, including your dad, they're, they're, they were brought to church, the family, every Sunday. Was this the power of positive thinking church, or was it a mainline sort of Protestant church? I honestly don't know how frequently they attended church. I don't think it was. I don't believe it was every Sunday. Uh, certainly not when they were older. And as far as I recollect, my grandfather joined Margaret Collegial Church, Collegiate Church, which was uh, Norman Vincent Peale's church, the guy who wrote The Power of Positive Thinking in the early 50s, mid 50s. Um, so, you know, I never got the impression that any of them, with the exception of Marianne, who converted to Catholicism uh, before her first marriage, was particularly religious or church going. Yeah. Did you ever hear your uncle talk about religious people? What were his thoughts before he got into politics and needed their votes about religious people, about Christians? He doesn't have any. Uh, He has no connection to religion or faith that I'm aware of. Um, You know, he's quite good at uh, finding what, in his words, he would call suckers. So uh, as we've seen... Um, unfortunately, he's been able to, you know, co-opt people's faiths. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.